Welcome to another episode of Best Show Bests, the greatest hits of the best show, with me, your host, Tom Sharpling. If you like what you hear, make sure you join us every Tuesday night on Twitch at 6 p.m. Pacific for a brand new episode of The Best Show featuring callers, celebrity guests, live music, and plenty of surprises. Enjoy! Hello, Best Show. What up, Tom? Hey. Ricky Schwartz and Druber calling from New from Newbridge. What's going on? Not a whole lot. What was your first name? Uh, Ricky. Ricky. I Ricky thought Schwartz I didn't mean Ricky, Ricky Schwartz and Druber. I didn't mean to talk over you. How are you? That's okay. I'm I'm doing good. You know, uh, spring's kind of sprung. I guess we're we're past spring, or, or we're we're in the thick of spring. We're getting it's getting hot, but. Uh, Doing, doing good. A lot of news happening. Oh my God. Every day is crazy, right? It really is a wild time to be alive. It is. Yeah. Um, look, I know this is a controversial take, but um, I really think that last night was the night that Trump finally became president. He did an interview with, on um, where was it again? Fox? A, a fox with this guy, Br- Brett Baer, who was really tough, but gosh, Trump looked great. He didn't look, he, he didn't look at all terrified or consumed with keeping history's most massive house of cards from burying him at any second. It's really impressive. <laughs> he's so he's really, really, uh, you're really blown away by him there, huh? Yeah, he was in full control the whole time. Very presidential, especially when he said things like, um, those boxes were, were full of all sorts of things. They were my boxes. I had every right to keep them. My stuff was in them. I wanted to look through my boxes. I mean, that's a president, Tom. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's very distinguished, I guess, is the way I would describe it. Very, yes. I mean, I could see every president who's ever has ever been president doing that. I mean, I can see Truman doing that, mm-hmm. uh, Ike, Lincoln, yeah. And just Everybody. being like, those. it's my stuff. I want to look at it. it. I want it. It's mine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but look, I, I, I don't want to get too, too into politics. I, just, I know it's a, it's a fun show. So, uh, so it's a big anniversary day today. I'm not sure if you're aware or not. What, what, uh, what is it? 48 years ago today, Jaws premiered. How many years ago? I think it was 48. Wow. It was 75, right? Right? Yes. Jaws was 1975. That's wild. The, the first, the first blockbuster, right? Pretty much. Yeah. That's the, that's the one that changed everything. Yeah, I think it was that was the first one and the second one was Basket Case. I don't know if Basket Case would have would have if you could rank that a true blockbuster. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, man, I'm thinking of It's Alive. Remember that it's kind of a similar uh conceit, right? Um not sure that qualifies as a as a, a pure blockbuster either, but All right. Well, Getting back to, to Jaws, it 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 uh, it did give us what I consider the fifth most iconic film line in history. Oh, what's that? Well, first I want to say I'm I'm not talking about you know the one that everyone likes to quote that that's uh, you know the thing about a shark got dull lifeless eyes like a doll's eyes. Which is a good line, but yeah. it's not that. Mm-hmm. That was impressive. Um, well, let's thank you. Thanks. Let's do one, uh, one to five. So we'll start with the most iconic line of all time. I think we could all, all all agree is we like to send out a mailer from National Lampoon's Vacation, right? In terms of the greatest movie li- lines of all time. Yes. Yeah. So that's number one. Uh, number two, of course, I want to say Mason from the, the Martin Short vehicle, Clifford. Yes, um, yes. Great one. Number three, I love you, Ma. I want to be with you. Good fellas. Good fellas, of course. Um, 
Number four, It Don't Work, Kill the MF, which is, of course, from, I know it's a favorite of yours. Death Wish 3, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And number five, getting back, circling back to our, our uh, topic, this boat needs to be way bigger, sir. I didn't remember him going she at the end of it. But because he, he he has that he has that huge cigar, remember? That's right. It could be one of those things, you know, when you hear the thing and you think you memorize it a certain way, and then you hear you actually check it out, and you're like, "Oh, I got it almost right," but it was a little different. I guess the the she is the part I'm. I think right is it? You're sure you got that right? I, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure, but uh, you know how how uh, Bruce the shark was mechanical, you know? Yes. Bruce wasn't supposed to be mechanical. Okay. What was he supposed to be? Um, Spielberg wanted Carl Malden to play the shark. He really. He did. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how that would have worked, but from what I heard, it got as far as. Malden taking water thrashing lessons for a couple weeks. But then that's really interesting. Those that's the kind of behind the scenes stuff that makes you just love movies. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it, 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 it's, uh, it's wild. And, um, can I talk about something else wild that happened the other night? Yeah. Yeah. I would love it. Well, it was Sunday night, and I went to a Rat Men baseball game. Oh, wow. You saw the Rat Men. Did I did. Yeah. Wasn't, wasn't a whole lot of us there, right? No. Rat Men are bad this year. I, what is their record? I think it's like 3 and 52. Yes, it is. And, which is weird because it's not their worst showing ever. No. At this point in the season. <laughs> no, they've been worse. <laughs> so you went to a Ratman game. Well, uh, that must have been cool. Yeah. Yes, it, it, was, it was fun. It was pudding night, you know, where they give everybody pudding in, in those little miniature batting helmets. Remember, we used to love eating eating Sundays out of them when we were kids. Remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. To get a little Ratman helmet. And it's filled with pudding? Yeah, that sounds like yeah. heaven on earth. Yeah. Right? So it was until they ran out of the helmets. Okay. Well, so what, what they, happened? They had maybe... Well, they had, they had maybe... I would say there's probably 1,500 people in that stadium. It, it holds like 10,000, so there, it wasn't a big turnout. But they only had about 500 helmets, which is... Weird. So basically everybody else who didn't get a helmet, they were just holding their hands out in front, like almost like, please, sir, can I have more? Remember that? Yeah. What was it called? Oliver Twist? Oliver Twist, yes. Yeah. So he's like, please, sir, can I have I want more, please. Yeah. Yeah. So people were just standing there getting vanilla pudding ladled into <laughs> into their cupped palms. Well, that, it was. It was really. It was sick. It, 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 it seems a little sick. Yeah, yeah. What? So, vanilla pudding splashing everywhere. You know, just yeah. white pudding. Tom, um, uh, it was a lot like that erotic movie from the nineties, Willy Wanker and the Factory. Yeah, Maybe I had, I had, I had to. Fun. I had to cut that one little. Yeah. Um. That was. Uh, well, you brought back a ton of memories by mentioning that movie. I haven't thought about that in a million years. Yeah. Um, that was always yeah. on cable yeah. at night. <laughs> Sick, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it was it, but, what? What night was? Game, what yeah. night was the game? Sunday. It was hot. Very hot. Really hot. So everybody's got pudding in their hands on a an unusually hot night. Hot pudding hands. That, that sounds like a song by a band I've never heard of. I don't know. Yeah, it sounds like someone would do a song called Hot Pudding Hands. I don't know if I want to even know who that band is. 
same. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I've never heard of him. Um, so the baseball game w- was eventful in, in that Gus Brennan fell asleep at the plate. Gus Brennan, the, who's holding the record for most consecutive games for the Ratmen. Yeah. And he's playing. And people yeah. who maybe don't live in the, in the Newbridge area and they don't know, he's been doing this for a long time. And it's, it's like ceremonial at this point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's barely there. I, I, I think he's 70, maybe at least. Right. And, and he fell doing as- a long time. He fell asleep at the plate. For three minutes. Well, that's a new low even for Gus Brennan. Right? Yeah. It, he was so asleep, but he was standing. Nobody wanted to wake him. So after after that three minutes, they wheeled out his cot that he sometimes sleep. You know, he sometimes lays in when he's in left field. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so he just slept the rest of the game at the on deck circle. Oh, that's that's a bummer. That's a bummer. Yeah. But the crowd was really respectful and, and they were pretty quiet for the rest of the game because they, they didn't want to wake him. And he, he didn't. He never woke up. He never woke up. No, I mean, I mean, he's alive. But, OK, but he, OK. He slept for the entire game. OK. Right. Well, so after the after the game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I didn't mean to cut you off, Ricky. So after the game. I'm walking to my car. It's a couple blocks away, and I hear the sound of footsteps behind me, right? Yeah. And I look back, and I see this, this tough guy about 10 yards behind me. And he, he must have seen me leave the game or something, probably saw I was an easy target to mug. And he's got these three miniature baseball helmets in one hand, and he's clinking them together like that boy in the Warriors who says, um, for what? And the girl asks him if he's going to pay for his candy. Remember him? Yes, I do. Wow. That's, and this Terrible. is what you hear Terrible. behind. It's terrifying. Clinking. The clinking. Yeah. Oh my God. It was, it was really, so I start running and I start running a little harder, but I, I don't run much. So I, I tripped and I landed on my back, so I'm facing up. Uh huh. And the guy, the guy gets to me, and, and he kind of gets on top of me, and he says, "Just do what I say, and I won't shoot you." And I, I didn't see a gun, but you know, I thought I, sh- you know, I should better go along with this. I, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I who knows, you know. So pretty scary, right? That's scary. That's seriously scary. Yeah. Tom, I don't know where this came from, but I look him in the eye and I say, oh, yeah? Well, I did ayahuasca last week, and I was shown that my life ends in a water skiing accident in Seabridge in May of 2034. That's what you said. I did, and he's looking at me like, what the F? Like, who, what is this? Yeah. How does this guy know this, right? And then... I did that. I did that thing that Chris Walken does in, in the dead zone. Uh huh. I, I I grab him by I grab him by the arm, and I I go I, I go into this trance. I shut my eyes, and I say, and "I was shown that yours ends in thirty seconds if you make the wrong decision." Wow. Right? Crazy. And and. He got so scared, he bolted upright, gave me his wallet, and he ran off. He gave you his wallet? Yeah. Wow. It was the weirdest thing. I, I, he, thought, he thought I was some kind of sorcerer, you know? Okay. Like, How does this guy know this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, That's intense. Um. Yeah, Tom, I pulled that out of my ass. I made the whole thing up. What what whole thing? All of it. What do you mean? The stuff you said to him? Yeah, that. Um, also, uh, going to the baseball game, the pudding, uh, Gus, Gus Brennan falling asleep and, and getting mugged. Why? 
Oh, so wait, that's what you, that's, you just made all, I, you were, oh, I thought you were making up the fact that you, with the ayahuasca thing. No, pretty much everything I said was made up. So you just lied a lot to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I just wanted to F with you. I don't know. Oh, uh, that's not cool. I'm sorry. But, but hey, the, there is a reason I'm calling, and it, it, it's because I need some career advice. Oh, okay, okay, sure, sure. What, what can I all do right. for you, Ricky? Well, oh, okay. Uh, all right. I, um, I see your production staff did an image search for my name. It's, it's a pretty un, uh, uncommon name. And they posted pretty much the only photo of me that does come up on a search. Um, uh, this, this photo w- was taken moments after I led the Newbridge High Wrestling Newt to a oh my god victory at the at the regionals in 2005 right so i i, I was pretty a- out of control uh-huh about my victory and i i went up and i grabbed the the scorer's microphone to say how this was a victory for all of newbridge and that margs are on me at los amigos that night mm-hmm. is, is this still weird that the drinking age at, drinking age in newbridge is still 16 that weird it's it is very weird yeah. Anyway, so you know that's why I'm I'm bellowing in into that into that microphone and that 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 night that victory that might have been the greatest event uh, of my life, Tom. I I still think about it all the time. It's kind of it's probably like that night that you met Marshall Crenshaw and he was super nice to you. Well, I mean, he wasn't really. I wouldn't say nice. Wait, hold on. I saw this yeah. thing. I thought they were just running. It. This is the picture. I thought they were. I thought the the crew was putting different. That's you. That's me. Yeah, yeah. It was really sweaty. I mean, you, Ricky. You know, you know who you look like, right? Well, well, I I, I do as of a week ago. It's it's the rock singer Glenn Danzig, right? Oh yeah, no. This is yeah. It's it's wild. This is not even close to being like a Quinn. This yeah. is this is dead on. It is. Yeah. Uh, um. Can, can I nutshell the situation for me, if you don't mind? Oh yeah, please. Now I'm now I'm in. Yeah. Now I'm intrigued. Even more intrigued. Okay. I mean. Well. Well. Sure. I'm. I'm a pretty average 32-year-old dude. I, I didn't go to college. I, I'm a worker and proud of it. I do muffler installations at Muffler Village. Um, I've got a terrific wife and two great kids. Uh, it, it, it's actually kind of a funny story how my wife, Deirdre, and I got together. Um, it, it, it'll take like 10 seconds to, to tell you the story. It's kind of funny. Can I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to hear it. So she worked at this diner I'd go to on my lunch break back around probably 2011 or so. And we banter and stuff, but I never got the impression she, capital L, liked me, even even though I'm sure she knew I had a massive crush on, on her. But uh, so one day I'm leaving the diner after having a really fun time bantering with, with Deirdre. And I, I walk out and I turn to my right. So now I'm looking directly into the big window at the front of the restaurant uh, so I can see my table, the table I had just been sitting at. And standing there are two of the other waitresses at my table, doubling over in laughter, watching Deirdre do the most comically exaggerated, I don't know how else to say it, but fellatio gesture I've ever seen. It, it was so- it was so weirdly unsettling, but it was also the funniest thing I'd ever seen. And I was like, oh, I guess maybe she does like me. She didn't want me to see it. But so I, I go back into the diner and I say to her, I- I'm never going to find anyone as messed up as you. And we should probably get married, right? And she goes, okay. And we did. 
Wow, Ricky, that's a that is, weird. That is a that's a weird one. And I mean, congratulations. Thank you. I wouldn't see that um, going that way. But no, no, no. I just thought, oh my god, I'm never going to meet someone who has the cojones to to do that. Anyway, so conversely, I'm in mucho Dutch with her right now. Okay. Mucho, mucho Dutch? Yeah. Tell me. Mucho Dutcho. I guess that's Spanish. Okay. I I don't know if that's Spanish at all, but. um, Might be. Could be. It it could be, but it probably isn't. But go ahead. Could be. Well, who knows? So. Someone who speaks Spanish wouldn't. Someone who speaks Spanish would know, but please go. Go ahead. Okay. So. I accidentally sent her a text that was meant for someone else. Oh, no. Um, I'm not perfect, okay? There's only one who was. But the text, which read, I love what we did the other day, but please tell me, are, are you seeing someone else? That I sent it to Deirdre, but it was meant for my girlfriend. Oh, Ricky, that's bad. I know, I know. So, needless to say, Deirdre was livid. And, man, when I found out she knew about it, I was like a deer in the headlights. Yeah, well, a deer, what's that, a deer where? Um, a deer and the headlights. You've never heard that before? A deer in the headlights is the expression. What do you, what do you think it is? A deer, yeah, in a deer. in the headlights. Oh, is that what it is? That is what it is. Yes. Oh, I thought it was like it was a deer that had headlights so bad that the lights actually kept it from seeing. No, okay. no, that's not it. Okay, okay, so. At this point, I got to go into maximum butt saving overdrive, right? Okay, sure, sure. I am. I immediately call Deirdre and I say, "No, no, you got it all wrong. I was texting you about who we were going to hire to build our mud room. Your mud room, okay? Yeah, and then I say, it's just I, I thought we agreed on Smurfweight Construction, but it seemed like you wanted to see." what other companies were out there. And when I said, I loved what we, we did on, on Saturday, I, I meant I loved how we spent all of that beautiful Sunday afternoon inside talking about our feelings. Okay. So this, and how much of this is, is uh, true? Well, define true. Uh, how much no, of all, the- everything I've said, just, I, Everything I've said now is true. Everything from when I said I, I to- made up all that other stuff to now is totally true. Okay. I, I don't know. I mean, you right. just, okay, you, you're telling me or you're asking me? I'm telling you. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so I'll, I'll take your word Deirdre for it. Let it. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. Oh, thank you. So, okay. So De- Deirdre you know, kind of says, all right, but I can feel this is all about to come crashing down, Tom. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. Uh, so, in the meantime, I'm always on the lookout for more income, you know, because it's it's getting expensive. So, a week ago, I was in the stock room at Muffler Village, and it was a day just like Sunday. Super hot, 90 degrees, no AC back there. Mm-hmm. And so, I'm... I'm sweating like Craig Diller during the fifth pivot of the 2018 World Series of Tetherball, right? Like it's it's hot. That's hot. It's real hot. Yeah. So all I'm wearing is my black work pants and my black work boots. No shirt, nothing else. All right. So okay. and when I when I sweat, like in that wrestling photo, my hair kind of comes forward and all, it, so it's in like almost a vampire sort of lock you know like a 
something like Bella Lugosi, whoever played Dracula would, would have. Right. Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, um, yeah, it's a, it's an, it's called, people call it the devil lock. Oh, they do. I don't like that at all. Okay. I'll just call it a, lo- a D lock. Um, okay. Is that all right? You call it whatever you want, Ricky. Okay. So it looks so much like a vampire that my teammates started calling me Count Pennington. Count Count Pennington? Pennington, like you pin your opponent. Oh, Pennington, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, Coach Fannel had this idea for me to come out in a cape and say to my opponent, I want to pin your butt. That was your coach's idea. Yeah, I didn't like it. It was very awkward, and, you know, especially if I knew I was probably going to lose, it was even more embarrassing. Well, yeah, because you're making such a show of things, and then you're not delivering. Yeah, yeah, but I I delivered a lot, you know, but the times I didn't, and I did, I want to pin your butt. It was really, uh, it was cringe, you know, super. So, all right, so it's that super hot day a week ago. This car pulls up to the service area to get his muffler changed. Mm-hmm. The guy gets out of the car. He's staring at me. You know, I'm, I'm in my pants and boots, completely sweaty, shirtless. And this guy's looking at me like he's just found the Holy Grail or something. Okay. Drops to his knees and he says, Mein Führer, I don't know what is going on. Like, what, what? And he introduces himself as Sean, and he says he's the guitarist in this band called Static Age. And they do a whole tribute to this band I'd never heard of called The Misfits. Sure, yes, The Misfits. It's a... You've heard of them. Of course I have. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a a big fan. So so they're popular. They're, They're kind of legendary at this point. Yeah, they're more than popular. Okay, okay. Okay, I know you like music, and I, I wanted your confirmation on that. So, Sean says they play punk rock, which I don't know anything about. You know, I, I honestly I don't really pay much attention to, you know, to the radio at all. My my favorite bands are a lot of things. My you know my dad turned me on to Ario Speedwagon, Journey, Boston, some Creed. Um, you know, the probably the closest I come to hardcore punk is Night Rangers. You can still rock in America. Yeah, that's, 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 I I would say that's pretty far from hardcore punk. Oh, well, it's really fast. Okay. Um, so anyway, Sean says that Static Age just lost their singer. This is really sad. He was involved in that terrible zip line accident over Lake Beat Bridge. Mm -hmm. And they, they only found his forearms. That's terrible. It's sick, right? It's truly sick, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Sean said because the actual Misfits only play a couple times a year, the demand for live Misfits is never. And he did. He he put up his like quote fingers, and he did hashtag quenched. Weird, right? W- weird. Yeah. Anyway, so he said if he and the other guys can teach me how to sing and be a front man because of how close I resemble this George Danzig. Is it George? What is it? It's Glenn. Glenn. This yeah. Glenn Danzig. We'd be the, num- we'd be the number one misfits tribute in the world. Uh-huh. He's been bigger than 20 eyes and, hi- and hybrid moments. Wow. That's, those are big shoes to fill. Yeah. Yeah. So it could be a real financial shot in the arm for my family and me while I still have a family. Right. Uh huh. You mean before uh, everything comes what? crashing down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I've never sung in my life. That's a real problem. I, I have no sense of rhythm or any understanding of how music works. So, there's that. Basically, when when my junior high music teacher heard me sing the first day of music class, she um. He asked me to pack up my books and stand on the school's roof for the rest of the day. Oh, that's 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 pretty extreme to make a kid I stand think on so. the roof. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think I was. 
yeah, I didn't think I was that bad, but I guess I was. So, you know, there's that. I'm also worried about my safety if I do take the job. These these mash pits. What what's what goes on in them? The a uh, uh, what now? They're called mash pits. Ma- mosh ma- mosh pits. Spell it. M O S H. Oh, I thought it was mash. It's not mash. It's mosh. So are kids like stabbing one another? What are they doing in there? No, they just go in and they kind of just shove each other around and and have fun. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds kind of neat. Well, that, um, I guess that's cool. But you know, I'm, I'm having a hard time identifying with the misfits' song words. You know, the lyrics they're they're about naming and causing trouble and basically not following society's mores or rules. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, and it's something you feel you you can't turn down the opportunity, though. Is that kind of yeah? And you know the the band's imagery. It's pretty. It's very dark. And you know, I'm I'm not spiritual, but I'm very religious. You know, I love the um, I love the boredom, the creative senselessness of the church punishments, the cool robes, all of that stuff. It's just. I don't know. I'm fascinated by it. Sure, that's the part you like, but not the not any sort of heartening spirituality or or sense no, of, a sense of guidance no. or comfort. Not at all. No, no. Yeah, I really don't. No, to each, to each their it. own. To each their own, Ricky. Thank you. Well, so do you think I should do it or not? Um, it good money, and and they they said I could probably keep my job at you know, the Muffler place. Maybe it's something you got to try and go for it. You look a lot like him. Yeah. I I know it's like maybe I should I should revel in it, you know, or 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 as uh you know, as Peter Kress said about his first success with with Kiss, I'm 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 going to lavish in it. Well, maybe you should lavish in it. Yeah. I'm thinking of, yeah, I I think uh I think that Oh no! Wait, what? What is it? Oh no! What? What is it, Ricky? <gasps> what? <gasps> are you? Are your breathing is very labored. I've had a heart. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Oh my god! What? What I'm looking at right now outside my window, Tom? Yeah. It's so frightening. It's rendered me incapable of delivering a clever comment about the best show being the favorite podcast of somebody who wants to kill me. Sure. Oh, he, 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 so that's how that's how stuck you are right now. That's how scared I am. Oh, Ricky, I don't know what to tell you. What's going on? I'm standing upright next to my lawn sprinkler system. <sighs> Are two severed forearms. Oh my god. Two severed forearms. Um the forearms want their gig back running static gauge. Oh no. <laughs> Ricky. I mean it's it's weird. I pay to see that. Right? Yeah. I mean it's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, Ricky, you got mm-hmm. this is a rough one, buddy. <laughs> I'm scared. And Tom, I'm worried that the forearms are going to kill me, and Deirdre and I won't be able to attend a very special showing of Albert Brooks Lost in America at Chicago's Music Box Theater at 7.15 p.m. on July 3rd. <laughs> yeah, you're worried about that, Ricky? Yeah, t- uh, yeah, tickets are on sale now. Yeah. Music box website. Well, Ricky, I uh, <laughs> think fingers crossed you can get through that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, the forearms are starting to tap on my window. Can you hear it? I can. I can. I hear them. I hear them uh-huh. tapping. Oh no. Okay, well, I'm gonna go and do whatever happens next. 
Sorry, can you just say a little prayer for me? Oh, I am. I am right now. Out loud. Uh, Jesus Christ, please, Lord. I I got nothing else. I'm so sorry, Ricky. That's the best I can. Oh, that's enough. That's that's enough. That's enough. That's Thank enough. You. Okay. Okay. All right, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Be safe. Oh, you have a good night. You too. Okay. okay. Bye. 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 Oh no. <laughs> there it goes. Oh no. That. Well, Ricky. Oh, Ricky.